Welcome to Cujo Sound. This is Unity and Wise Integration. Right, welcome back to Cujo Sound. So what we did last time was that we created an ignore area. Now we want to be able to create an ignore array, just like you see it over here, where you can add as many of these areas as you want and have your project ignore all of these areas. This gets a little bit hairy, but we will get to that. In our code, let's see here, we have one public ambient area ignore area. That is fine, but what we're going to do is that we are going to define that this is no longer just one. This is going to be an ignore area array. And you write array by writing these two hard brackets. And we're going to call these ignore areas instead. This means that whenever we do this, so once that we have added the just the hard brackets to it, we already get an ignore areas list here. And right now it's zero. And if you just type, let's say five, you can mark five areas that will then behave as we showed in the previous video. We set it to zero. Now each of these, they basically represent ignore areas zero, one, two, three, and four, which means that we need to define something with those values. We'll get to that. So what we have is that we have this main area and we have these two houses down here, this one and this one. We want to define that these two areas should be ignored. So in the code, we have already defined, we have an ambient area here, an ambient area array that we call ignore areas. This here is our ignore value and our RTBC ignore value. So let's redo this code down here in the check ignore list. So again, if, and this is different from before, if ignore areas dot length equals equals zero, then return. So if the length of everything, that's different from the other zero, because in here, this is element zero, as you see, but that's different because if the length of the of the list, that is this number here, if that is zero, then don't do anything. Because if the ignore list is, of course, empty, then don't check any of this code. Basically, you could write that if ignore areas hard parenthesis zero dot is in area, then you hard code that if you're inside area zero. But what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to have this work regardless of how many of these we have. So we are going to create a different one saying that for an integer value that we call i equals to zero. This is where it gets a little hairy. We'll explain it a little right after semicolon i is smaller than ignore areas dot length semicolon i plus plus and then you can create something here this is like an if thing like an like an if bracket so this checks if if ignore areas length is zero and then return but this checks that as long as a value that we call i it starts at zero and as long as it's smaller than length it should add itself. So it's going to run this list. Everything that you place in here is going to run this as long as i does not become equal to or greater than the length of it. So if we have five, it's just going to run this thing in here five times. Okay. So inside here, we can write whatever we want. So if we have, if ignore areas i that means that it's the current number of times that we are running through this. So this is the first time on the list because right now it's zero equals null. Then we can say debug.log ignore area plus i plus is no. Semicolon. This means that if this ignore area i equals null, then we write a debug log saying which one of them is null, so that in case some programmer or someone else needs to run this through, you will get an error message saying that it's area one, area five, area six, or one thousand. That will tell you this is null, and that way it's going to be much easier for you to debug. Okay, so that's the debug part. We're just going to make a comment here saying that if any of the ignored areas is not assigned return a debug message 
with the ignored area. Good. All right. So we are going to say now that if ignored areas dot no i dot is in area. So it checks all of these. And if one of them returns as is an area, then we do something. So if we are if ignore areas is an area in any one of the ones that we add to it is true, then ak ak sound engine dot set rtp set r rtpc value rtpc ignore comma ignore value comma audio emitter. The reason why we define that this is audio emitter that this is the RTPC and this is the value that we want and we send it to this specific audio emitter is because we only want it to happen this instance. So if you're in a different area of the game later, it won't affect it because this RTPC is only set on this specific audio emitter so that it's specific to that. It's not global. So in case you are running multiple of these and you want one area to ignore another one, but another area to play at the same time and not ignore the same one, this does not affect it. If you leave this out, then it becomes global, which means that it will affect every object which has this RTPC affecting it. And we don't want that. We want it to be only on the audio emitter that we have to find in here in our code. There you go. Good. So, AK Sound Engine. So, we can also say here that if enable debug, and that's really smart because we created that as the first thing that we did. Debug dot log. Here we go. Is in ignored area plus I semicolon. That means that if we enable debug and we run into an area, you will be able to see which ignored area we are in. And I'll show you in a bit how that works, because we will be able to know which of the ignore areas we are in by running into the separate houses. And you can see that it's area 0 or it's area 1. And we want the same thing to happen as before. So else, ak sound engine dot set rtpc for rtpc ignore comma zero comma audio emitter there you go and we end it there you go so this defines that if we are inside this area then it sets the value to the ignore value that we set but if we are no longer in this area it goes back to zero with the slew rate that we defined in wise as you can see over here if you didn't get it let's follow up here if ignore areas is zero, do nothing. Run this line, this, this whole code is run every time we are inside a collider. And that's a little ineffective, but ask your programmer perhaps if they can make a more efficient way of it. This one checks on every frame. That, of course, shouldn't be done. But for a sound designer perspective, this works and gets the job done. And it's really, really smart. It checks. Let's say that we over here in Unity say that we want it, the value here to be two. It should check these two houses that we have, this house and this house, this area and this area. So there's two of those, which means that this code is now run twice. It starts at zero, checks if it's smaller than the total length, and then it adds one to itself. That means that this will be run twice, everything that's in here. If it's null, tell us which area is null, and we'll deal with it. If any one of these values returns the value is an area, then AK Sound Engine sets the value of the RTPC to the value that we have added over here. And usually it should be 0.5 or 0.6 or something. If you write 1, it muffles it completely. In this case, we want 0.6. And that's it. So we want check ignore list to be run every time that we are inside a collider. And we do that by writing it here. When we exit the collider, we don't care about it. When we are just on a normal playing thing, we don't care about it. We only want to check it when we are inside it. All right? So let's see if it works, and I'll show you. So we have our main area here. I have defined 
our listener, where is the listener, and what is my third person controller, as we defined in some of the other scripts that we did, as we defined in other, the other videos about this ambient area. Now, ignore areas. There are two ignore areas, right? Two, and these two pop up. And this is how an array works. You write the size of the array, and then it adds them here. It's the one house here, and it's this other house here. We wanted to muffle it by 0.6. All right, so now that we start playing, you will see, let's enable debug here. You will see that this is an area becomes true. And as we enter this area here, this is an area will also become true. And when that happens, we will get a message here saying that we are in ignored area one. Here we are. Well, not ignored area one, but ignored area zero, and that's the one. So if we run into the other house, as you can see it down here in, if we pause it a little bit, you can see it here, is in ignored area zero. That is what we defined down here. That if enable debug, then is in ignored area plus the number that we have defined up here. So if we run into the other house, Ta -da! is in ignored area one. And in case you have 50 of these, it will tell you is in ignored area 50. So the point is that you can add as many of these as you want. You can actually add a thousand if you want and get a really, really long list of these in case you have a really, really big level. It's really easy to maintain as long as you make sure that your very, very specific code in here checks. This would basically work for regardless of how many there is. Now, if you have a thousand of these, this code will run a thousand times. That's very, very inefficient, which is why you should ask your programmer to make a more efficient way, like check only if you're inside a specific collider or something like that. But that's how it works. This RTBC is set to a certain value every time and it's audio emitter specific so you can set it to 0 0.6 for one emitter and another emitter can be zero at the same time and this muffles the area which means that now we can move around our level and we can sort of like doesn't have to be indoors it can also just be let's say you enter a forest area and you want the general outside wind to be muffled just a tiny bit so you can set it to like 0 0.3 you can work around with all these mixing tools and that's how it works Really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about it. This is how Wise and Unity works in a nutshell. Thank you for watching. Please hit like and subscribe if you want to know more. See you next time. Thank you for watching Kujo Sound. If you want to know more about game audio, Unity, and Wise integrations, please like this video if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe if you want to know more. Or head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel and the time I take off to create all this material. I would really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Kujo Sound and Bjorn Jacobson signing out.